Hey guys, it's Vishy here. You watching Nick Sapien. Welcome to another episode of Stupefying Species. In this video, I'll be talking to you about echolocation. Echolocation is used by organisms such as whales and bats. This mainly helps them to navigate in the dark and help them capture the prey in the dark. Watch the video to know more. If you like my videos, do subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. Echolocation is the usage of sound waves and echoes to find where objects are in space. Bats mainly use this technology or method to navigate in the dark and to find food in the dark. The bat sends out sound waves through its mouth or nose and this goes and hits the object, the target primary object and it bounces back of the object and this echo is picked up by the bat. So the bat has a mental orientation or it uses its brain to calculate the shape, size and distance of the object from it so that it can fly towards it and capture its prey. The bats can detect objects as thin as human hair in complete darkness. Does this mean bats are blind and they use only this echolocation to find its prey and navigate in the darkness? No, bats aren't blind. But we too can't see in total darkness, isn't it? So the bats use the echolocation as an advantage to capture its prey such as mosquitoes and insects. What would you do if you were left in a completely dark room? You would just go here and there haphazardly, right? You won't be able to see anything. But the bat uses echolocation and can navigate precisely. So echolocation can be called the eye of the bat in darkness. If you have seen the film Thandavum, you would have seen the hero using echolocation to navigate because he was blind. So blind people can learn echolocation and this echolocation can help them navigate through the different roads and uh, streets. So humans can also use echolocation to find where objects are, how far it is, how big it is, what is the shape of the object and all. You need to train your brain in such a way so that the reflected sound you hear can picturize what kind of object is there. Suppose a bat echolocates towards an insect such as moth, beetle or cricket. What would the moth, beetle or cricket do? It has three options. One is to turn away and change the direction and fly off when it hears the echolocated sound waves. Option number two is to fly in a zigzag or spiral pattern that can confuse the bat. And the third option is to produce clicking sounds that can startle the bat and the bat flies off in the opposite direction. It gets scared of the sounds produced by the insect. Just like how most of the scientific inventions are inspired from nature, similarly echolocation has inspired a lot of people to work towards sonar and radar. Do check out my video on LiDAR in which I have also spoken about radar and sonar. So the military got the idea of using sound waves for navigation and finding where the objects are and applying them in submarines and ships. So bats have inspired us, dolphins have inspired us to produce this technology of sonar and radar. Just like we humans have an organ known as larynx which helps us to speak, the bat too has the larynx that helps it produce high frequency intense sounds so that the bat can produce a variety of sounds for echolocation, a high frequency as well as a low or middle range frequencies. So the larynx is well adapted in case of the bat. The character of sound produced by the larynx varies with different species of bats and the type of activity the bat is performing. We humans can hear between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. This is the normal range of hearing. Whereas the bat produces sound that is in the range of 30,000 to 80,000 hertz. So which is a very high frequency sound. The high frequency plays a very important role because the wavelength which is inversely proportional to frequency needs to be very small in order to determine the size and shape of the object. Smaller the wavelength, 
higher is the accuracy of determining the size and shape and distance of the object. There are three main problems to echolocation. One is that the bat needs to rule out all the external disturbances or external noises which can interfere with its comprehension of the received echoes. And the second problem is that in a short period of time, it needs to calculate the size, shape and the distance of the object such as the insect. And the third problem is that it needs to discriminate between an object and an insect which are the same size. So how does the bat overcome these problems and still survive by capturing its prey? Let's see. The external ear of the bat is very well developed. It has a very large pinna so that it can collect most of the sound that is approaching it. With a large surface area, the pinna acts as an efficient collector and resonator of high frequency sound. These bats are also called as whispering bats because they make very faint sound and it has got a relatively large size of the head to pinna ratio. So the pinna is freely mobile and can be rotated and inclined in various ways. The meatus inverts to the eardrum contains a valve that can close to reduce entrance of sounds. The mammalian pattern of ossicular chain is also followed here. It has three bones over there for conduction of sound. The tympanic muscles are also relatively larger in the bat. The auditory portion of the nervous system has undergone extraordinary changes in the bat, which increase the efficiency many times in comparison to humans. Regions concerned with hearing are relatively enormous, which is in accord with the great predominance of hearing over other senses. The bat's ear is not sensitive to tones below a frequency of 10,000 Hertz, but it is highly sensitive in high frequencies such as 20,000 to 60,000 Hertz. The region less than 10,000 Hertz has very little significance for echolocation. So this cuts off the external noises and disturbances under 10,000 Hertz. It has often been observed that bats are not easily disturbed by sounds of low frequency, even extraordinary intense ones. This peculiarity of the structure of the ear, the physiology of the ear, has made the bats efficient, very efficient in masking the external noises, which are not necessary for echolocation. The slight degree of structural differentiation found in the cochlea of bats may represent another aspect of limitation to their hearing, to the part of sound spectrum most useful in echolocation. Therefore, we can say that the bat's ear has been developed for a particular purpose, for reception of high frequency sounds for echolocation which gives them a big advantage for capturing their prey and for navigation in complete darkness. That's it guys. If you like the video, do subscribe Nick Sapien. This is Fishy signing off.